Let's see what we can find down here. This is as close as I get. Otherwise, I'll have them crawling all over me. I have to find a way to eliminate them altogether. The water of life. Some of these whiskies are from local distilleries. Raw spirit. Not particularly palatable, but good for cleaning and magic tricks. Ooh, a lot of blood for just one animal. Looks fresh. Uh, Master Eddie's work. He and Mr. McKinnon put it here earlier. Poor beastie. Eddie? Another family member I've yet to meet. <sighs> Not the most hygienic workstation. Hmm, a hunting map. Looks like they've been poaching outside the Gordon Estate. Step right up! Sir? What are you... D oh my! Amazing! Uh, does that not hurt? No, a little trick I learned in India. <laughs> Sorry, did that scare you, Elsa? I didn't think. Huh. And you are? Edward Mallory. You may call me Edward III. So this is Cousin Eddie. He seems... Welcome to my castle. As terrible as the rest of them. My castle indeed. Pleased to meet you, Eddie. So your parents would be my aunt and uncle Clara and Victor. Are they... Dead. Dead as door nails, the pair of them. Lovely. You've lived here all your life, so you would have met my father. Only after he lost what marbles he had left. If it were up to me, I'd have locked him up in the loony bin a bit sooner. Locked him up? So what are you doing down here anyway? There's a line between honesty and rudeness that Cousin Eddie doesn't seem to recognize. I was helping Miss Cranon. Oh, why didn't you ask me? Excuse me, sir. Sirs, I really have to go. Leaving so soon? Or was it something I said? They all tend to act like that in the presence of nobility. You said something about a loony bin? I did. Oh. Oh, you don't know. Well? Well, never you mind. I have an animal to prepare. I'm getting very tired of everyone in this house avoiding my questions. Uh, uh, there's something you should know, sir. Something important. I overheard them talking, and I... Uh, you're paid to work, not chat. Get to it, girl. Sorry, Mr. McKinnon. Library after dinner. At last. I might get some answers.
smoking a pipe. I thought that would be beneath her station. Uh, Lady Margaret. David. May I first apologize for my strange behavior last night? It's just that... Uh, think nothing of it. You are obviously tired from your travels. Least said, soon is mended. I saw an old photograph of a boy in the other room. Something tells me she wouldn't be happy if she knew I had it in my pocket. Ah, that was taken in 1894. Young Johnny, your father. You can remember the exact year. It's a funny thing when you reach my age. You can remember dates from decades ago. But not what you had for breakfast. Maybe others can't. Um, who, may I ask, were the others in the picture? That would be your Aunt Clara and your late great-grandmother, the last true Countess of Scarhandu House. And my dear Edward, of course. I uh, noticed my father had a scar on his face. How did that happen? <sighs> Falling from a tree, perhaps? I can't recall. But your father was a clumsy child. Can't recall. But you remember the date the photograph was taken. Hmm. Uh, what kind of man was my grandfather? Oh, he was magnificent. He was handsome, so handsome, and caring. Caring enough to knock a defenseless child down the stairs. All was so very different when he was around. The maid, she seemed to be acting strangely, like she was frightened of me. Yes, well, she's a simple sort, that one. She has probably heard of the curse of the Gordons the locals like to whisper about. Curse? What curse? Just a peasant superstition. I would guess she was worried you'd show the same displays of unpredictable violence as your father did. I never knew my father to be the violent type. Oh, there are many things you do not know about your father. This is his doing. What? But, but how? I'd rather not discuss it, David. And that maid should really keep her mouth shut and locate the earring she lost. She's like a magpie with shiny, expensive things. Uh, this may seem like an unusual question. I'd be surprised if it wasn't, dear boy. Have I ever been here before? Is it possible I visited as a child and can no longer remember? Oh, no. You are a stranger to these walls. And I have a feeling you prefer it stayed that way. I shall take my leave, Lady Margaret. Yes. Oh, and David. The master of the house needs to respect the privacy of those under his roof. Even your father understood that. Sometimes a cabinet is locked for a reason. I was looking for some documents and Andrew had already gone to bed. I would still appreciate you respecting the rules of this house. You're not its owner quite yet. Definitely the man I saw last night. But how? Grandfather Edward died before I was even born. Then he'd be in his 70s if he was still alive.
Finally, some fresh air. <sighs> Master David. You could tell it was me. Your footsteps. I ken the walk of everyone here. Well, that's, that's rather incredible. Aye, that it is, laddie. That it is. I hear better than most. See more than most and all. When you talked about what they did to my father, what did you mean? You shouldn't have come back. You cannot go through what he did as a bairn and no be sick. So his hospitalization was justified then? Not for me to say. Before you think of putting down roots here, you should think on what the poison groom here did to your father, you can? No, not really. If you don't mind, this door will no mend itself. I'll leave you to it then. Father had a similar toolbox, back when he still fixed things around the house. Steady enough, Vessel, if you trust your swimming skills. I can see why Rory likes this place. This view should ease even the most troubled soul. Nobody left to mourn the dead, all care for their graves, it seems. Mm, locked with a padlock. Andrew will have a key, but I'm not keen on waiting for his return. <laughs> I've seen this before, in the painting. This is the grave I, I saw in that waking dream or whatever it was. The grave my father buried something in as a boy. Who's buried here? If I could just, ah, these vines are too thick.
better. Cecilia Shaw Nee Gordon. Aunt Cecilia. Now, let's see if there's something really buried in here. Another piece of the castle model. Another part of the model, and it's stained with what seems to be old blood. Why did Father bury this when he was a child? How could I have known that something was buried here? I don't remember Father ever telling me about this grave. Father must have buried the chapel piece here for a reason when he was a boy. But why? And whose blood is it stained with? Being the chronicle of the family Gordon, as laid down by Sir Drummond Gordon, the year of our Lord, 1413. Local legend speaks of this particular glen as being inhabited from time immemorial. Enigmatic, elaborately carved pectish stones stand as timeless evidence on this. As for the locals, they appear prideful of the counsel they delight in giving to visitors. Traveler, beware. The Celtic peoples arrived in this place like a great beast, bringing with them the bloodlines that would eventually spawn the Gordon clan. Using their superior numbers, knowledge, and machines of war, they swiftly conquered the primeval Picts. With them, they brought to their religion and druid clerics. The magics these wise men used did shape forever the lands, even until this present day. It is said, that the sempiternal burden our family carries rose at that time. It is well recorded how the Empire of Rome did fail to tame the wayward Scots, that they did even raise a barrier to protect their mighty empire. What is seldom told is the truth behind their defeat. Our ancestors drew upon ancient powers to aid their victory. Powers not easily fathomed by the fragile human mind. This aid did come at the greatest of costs. A debt as yet unsettled. A price we will continue to pay until the last Gordon passes to dust. For the centuries, we Gordons made the land our own. Others did bow to us as we kept the secrets of Skahandu. The secrets of the Black Mirror. Even as tragedy and madness did fester in our foundations, we held fast and steered the land through vile English attack and worse. In time, the Gordons and the land became one. Some pages have been ripped out. The only thing left seems to be some kind of family oath. In blood we are bound to the land we protect, to the truths we alone may conceal. I shall forfeit my life. Lest my clan should suffer, I shall forfeit my spirit to hold the darkness at bay. In blood we are bound till the day of the reckoning. What do you know? Where is that cold coming from? Is 
Is this what madness feels like? It can't be real. This looks like the bottom of a lake. What are you trying to show me? There's a fresh wound across her stomach. The figure up there must be... Edward. from this rotten family. Uh, did you... did you see her? She... Uh, drowned. Calm down, you're in shock. What were you doing clambering about in here? Uh, if I told you, 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 you'd think me mad. Odd. That is just what your father said to me. What? Who are you? My name is Dr. Leah Farber. I treated your father at the asylum. The asylum? Let's get you back to the castle and make sure you are all right. What did you come here for? I'm not sure your father's story is finished yet, and there are some things I still need to make my peace with. What's this about an asylum? As I said, your father was admitted. Why? Who did that to him? I did. But, unfortunately, he managed to escape. What? Hold on a minute. How dare you come in here and... Told you? Your father was a madman. A complete and utter madman. Don't mind me. Please continue. Well, what right did you have to lock my father up in a, in a madhouse? I was his doctor. I understand you are in shock, but you have no right to speak to me in such a way. I was trying to help him. He's dead. Capital job. 
Now, hold on just a minute. Jesus! Oh no! No! <laughs> Eddie. It'll be all right. Pull yourself together. I suggest nobody else goes down there. We should keep the room intact until the police can get here. I shall alert them first thing in the morning. What an unfortunate accident. An accident? You think so? Just after the madman's son turned up at our door? And yet you were the one standing over her body with blood on your hands. How dare you? I was too late. I was trying to help her. She... She... <laughs> there, there, my sweet boy. Let's get you to bed. Angus, would you? Of course, ma'am. I think we will all benefit from a good night's sleep. I know you may have no reason to, but I need you to trust me. I'm the only one on your side when it comes to your father's death. Lady Margaret certainly isn't. But if I told you what I saw in the chapel, you'd have me in a padded cell just like my father. Why did you come here? To make sure my father was successfully in the ground? With all due respect, Mr. Gordon, I will not allow you to speak to me or about my work in such a tone. I tried everything I could to aid your father. Your father was heavily drugged when he was brought to me. To prevent any further violent outburst, or so Lady Margaret had said. But something felt wrong, even then. So, what was my father like when you locked him up? I didn't just lock him up. I tried to help him. He was convinced he was carrying some ancient curse, that he was being haunted by evil. I wish I had reached him, had been able to reach him. Maybe if I threw you a bone, you'd get off my back. Father was obsessed with the history of the family for as long as I can remember. Did your father actually believe his family was out to get him? Who knows? I think what scared him was beyond the physical. He used to babble about a dark force threatening him and our family. Was that why he moved you to India? To get as far away as possible? I believe so. And yet, here you are, in the very place he sought to protect you from. Who knows? Maybe there is an ancient evil in this place. An evil that drags us back no matter how far away we get. Even from the other side of the world. And what do you think? Was your father right? Are there things beyond the physical? He was a disturbed man. He saw things that weren't there. Things like a drowning woman floating in thin air. 
If you really want to help me, then let us find out what the maid knew. She was hiding something, but was too scared of Angus and Margaret to tell me. You think whatever she wanted to confide might be connected to her death? Maybe. Whatever I saw in the chapel, it has to be real. It has to be. A woman must have drowned herself in the lock. Because if it's all in my mind, like father, like son.